Hi everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Press the like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. And if you've been subscribed to my channel, thank you for being one of the over 2,140 subscribers. I really, really appreciate that. Also, please forward this video to a coworker or a friend that might benefit from it. In today's video, we are going to be doing something different. We are gonna be talking about a video. I'm actually gonna be directing you to a video that was made by Ryan from the Security University and Training Solutions channel. And Ryan recently made a video and in the description box, I will leave links to everything that I'm talking about. He made a video about duty gear and he made a really, really good video, professional video about duty gear. And he doesn't just show you what he has, he explains why he has that particular piece of equipment. Highly recommend that you watch his video. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to give some supplementary, supplementary, excuse me, supplementary information to what he has. So his video is about duty gear. What I like about his video is all the equipment that he shows on video. The estimate cost is about two thousand one hundred dollars. I made a video about arm, an arm duty gear setup, and my numbers were about four thousand nine hundred dollars and that's everything that's including the permits and licensing to be an armed private security officer in california that's four thousand nine hundred dollars you compare that to used equipment two thousand one hundred dollars you are saving a lot of money let's talk about the reality of the situation so i'm in law enforcement some of you don't think i'm in law enforcement some of the trolls out there believe that i'm impersonating a peace officer which is totally fine where I am employed, my employer gives me $1,000 uniform allowance. Some employers give you $100, some give you $2,000, some $3,000, <clears> excuse me. But a lot of security employers don't give you the same amount of uniform allowance as a, as a police officer does. And I just don't think that that's, that's the right thing to do every single time. With a law enforcement officer, the equipment that private security needs, it's, it's very similar, very, very, very similar. Now, if you are going to buy used equipment, just as discussed in Ryan's video, there are there's a caveat, there's some suggestions that I have for you. Make sure that you get nothing that's, that's just battered up. So with leather gear, the more you wear it, the more brown spots and tan colored spots that you will see in in the in the leather gear do not buy this equipment and just put it on you and think that you're gonna go on patrol or work your post without with, without fixing it up because if you do the way that you're that the way that you present your duty belt reflects you if your duty belt is sloppy you as a private security officer are sloppy if it's if it's um, messy, if, if it's nylon gear and there's stains on it, that reflects you, okay? There's a lot of people being discharged from prison right now. A lot of parolees are coming out. And for years, they were examining the equipment that correction officers wear, the way that they talk, their standard address, the way that they shine their shoes or don't shine their shoes. And that tells, that, that, that tells somebody a lot about you. So if you want to have that strong command of presence, you want to have the ability to portray to others that you, you are able to control situations, control yourself. Because if you can't control what you wear, you can't control the, the looks of your equipment, that might be an accurate reflection of your attitude, the way that you deal with situations. So be, be one of those highly polished private security officers. Now with leather gear, what I suggest, as soon as you get it from maybe Craigslist or wherever, um, buy these, this is like a Kiwi sponge. So Kiwi is a brand of shoe polish. You can get this at Walmart or even Target and you run the sponge across the belt and the paint leaks in into the crevices and it just, it just gives it a, a nice, a nice, um, coat. There's something called leather luster. Um, it's been over 15 years since I've used that. It's a little bit too shiny for me. So I, I rather prefer um, Kiwi and I'm always welcoming your suggestions as well if it's nylon um, see what the manufacturer says 
on how to clean nylon. I, I believe you could put soap and water, but I'm not totally sure. But please don't show up to work with, with a stained duty belt. Um, duty belts tend to last a long time. I've seen officers wear theirs for 10 years, 18 years, 20 years. My duty belts, the only reason why I have to change them out, and you probably guessed it already, is from weight. I went from being, my first duty belt, I was 118 pounds, and I'm only 5'6". Um, my second duty belt, I hit 120, no, I hit 142, and then my third duty belt, which is the one I'm on right now, I'm at one, 158, 160. So the only reason why I'm, I have to change duty belts is because I've been gaining weight. Um, otherwise, they will last a, a very long time. Um, the only p piece that really snaps on a duty belt is where the buckle goes. Um, that's the piece that over 10 years, 12 years, 13 years, that piece will snap. Nylon tends to last longer. However, it it starts losing its shape after a while and some of the stains you just can't get out. Um, for a holster, you can get away with getting one on eBay or, or Craigslist. The, 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 pro the problem with that um, is that you don't know the condition of the holster. You don't know if, if, if somebody I don't know, ran it over with a car. You don't know if somebody tried to make their own adjustments with the holster and just destroyed it. Um, you don't know the condition of, you don't know if, this, if the screws inside of the holster, if they're, if they're stripped, um, if some of the bolts are coming off. I've had a holster maybe seven years and then I finally found a missing bolt on there. So please do a, a complete inspection, make sure that everything is there and make sure that you're able to draw quickly with the firearm. Um, and there's no obstructions at all. When you see any form of deep, any portion of deformation inside of these holsters that involve especially the trigger guard area, that holster needs to go in the trash. Once the holster starts deforming where the trigger guard's at, you have a very da dangerous condition. You can have a piece of leather or material that slips into the trigger guard. Once you holster that gun, that gun is gonna go off. So please be very careful. I, I prefer a brand new holster. Um, I usually don't, won't mess around with with, with the old ones. If you've been in this job a long time, um, you can make those risk a lot better. You can make those risk a lot better than somebody that's just barely joining in with private security, but that's something I don't negotiate with. Um, handcuffs, they just need a bunch of oil, oil the living you know what out of it. And these handcuffs tend to work. In my career of, we're talking about 23 years of combined law enforcement and security, I've seen one handcuff snap on one officer. Um, it, it was the, it was a chain link, the chained handcuff. It broke, but this officer um, has been using the handcuff for, I think he told me like 25 years and the links just snapped, it just snapped off. And that, that occasionally happens. Um, but yes, handcuffs you can use, you can buy secondhand, just make sure that they ratchet smooth. Again, I prefer not to, but if you're on a budget, you gotta do what you're gonna do because you don't have the luxury that law enforcement has of getting that one to $3,000 uniform allowance. Um, tasers, again, just be careful buying them new. Make sure that they work. You need to spark test them. Um, make sure that they were that this device wasn't dropped. The way that you can tell somewhat is look at the dents and the scratches. There are tons of, especially the dents, um, d dents and scratches on this taser device. And my my guess is you'll probably consider the X26 just because that's one of the devices that a, a lot of law enforcement agencies are they're they're phasing out right now for the I think it's the X7, the ta or the Taser 7. Um, so you might find a lot of X26Cs that are available. Um, just like Ryan said in his video, I don't see the car the Taser cartridges. Um, and ex if you get if you if you get expired on one, it seems it seems that they still work. In one of my videos that I made, I sh I fired a Taser cartridge that's f five years old or five years past expiration, and it it looked like it still works. Um, obviously, you want you want the newest unexpired cartridge, but hey, you know what? If you want to save some money, I I, I rather have brand new um, Taser cartridges. Just make sure that you test out the Taser device, um, and you got to do your risk manage your, your risk assessment. Is it is it worth getting an expired cartridge? Look on YouTube, see if they still function or not. Um, I've never had a problem with it with an old expired. Um, Taser cartridge working. Okay. If you decide to buy a brand new holster, 
make sure that you buy one that will accommodate the white light, well, the weapon light attachment to your gun. If you have a if you have a pick and tee rail on your firearm, um, you can accommodate a weapon light on there. You may not do it now because weapon lights are expensive. Your Surefire X300s easily run for $300. Streamlight, it's a little bit cheaper, but that's an additional $300. But look, in the future, if you decide to want a light, while well, you're going to have to buy a brand new holsters, we know that brand new holsters run an easy $250 to $300. So um, consider buying one where you're able to accommodate a light. And also, I would consider buying one where you can um, put a, a red dot optic on it. That's a new thing, you guys, is red dot optics. Your gun may not accommodate one, but you might want to get it mailed out. Red red dot optics are the thing right now. A lot of law enforcement classes, there's a waiting list to get into red dot optic class because that is the that's the latest technology right now. If you decide later to get a red dot optic on your gun, if you're able to, if your weapon is able to accommodate a red dot optic, you are going to have to buy a you may have to buy a brand new holster. So just do it right the first time, and there shouldn't be a problem. Also, I want you to keep in mind for the weapon light, weapon mounted lights, um, some holsters, if you don't have the light on, if you don't have the light attached to the gun, then the holster will not retain the gun. Meaning if you put the holster upside down, if you don't have the light on it, it'll just fall out. It's the light device that helps keep the weapon re retained. So please ask the manufacturer if you're able to wear it without, without a light. Um, for brands of holsters, I only stick to two right now. It's Safari Land, and the second is U.S. Holster. The reason why I chose U.S. Holster or why I would I would go with U.S. Holster is because the employees from U.S. Holster used to work from they used to work at Safari Land. Safari Land, they took a lot of their operations to Mexico. This group of Americans decided, no, we are staying in America and we're going to form our own company. So these former Safari Land employees began their own company called U.S. Holster. It might be USA Holster. Uh, most of their holsters are level two, though. You might look a little bit better, and you might find the level three. The problem with Safari Land is their technology is patented, so U.S. Holster can't just copycat what what Safari Land has. So that's another drawback. Okay, I encourage you, guys. This video is not a complete video. My video ends with Ryan's video with um with, with the secu secu uh, security university and training solutions channel and one last thing before i forget so i have a little bit of disagreement with the asp also known as a classical t baton ryan's um talks about it i would rather want a straight stick baton or a pr24 or side handle baton rather than rather than the uh, classical baton i've seen classical batons work and i also seen them fail i've seen suspects being hit with with a classical baton and them laughing at the officer um it it just the design of it um there's it's not as if it's not as effective in my opinion than a straight stick baton um i don't i don't have a, a classical baton to show you because i don't believe in them um, I rather prefer my straight stick baton, but I want you to keep this in mind. Um, right now, if I had to pick, and I was working private security, I would pick the collapsible baton, the ASP baton, only because a lot of employers will not allow you, well, a good percentage of employers will not allow you to carry a straight stick baton or a PR24 with the argument that it looks too, it, it looks too intimidating to people, and it should look intimidating. It should prevent somebody from committing a violent assault on you. That's... That's what they're. That's a good. If it does that, that's a good thing. Um, so I disagree with these employers not allowing their officers to carry a PR twenty four or a straight stick baton. I would still right now go with, if if I was on a budget and I didn't know where I was going to work, I would go with the the collapsible baton. Okay. Anyhow, looking forward to dialogue with everybody over here. Um, just want to know what type of equipment you carry and please go over to ryan's channel i'll leave a link in the description his video is a lot more complete than this 